Alright guys, how's it going? So today we're going to replicate this scene. Now you're probably thinking this is really easy to do and well you're correct. But I thought this is a good excuse to look at Blender 2.91 and we'll check out the new bevel profile tool. Now the inspiration behind this actually comes from an artist called Mark Warner and he makes tutorials for Lightwave. I highly recommend you check him out if you use Lightwave. He's an excellent artist but let's quickly jump into Blender. And in traditional fashion, let's delete this default cube. Now just to make things a little bit easier, I'm actually going to enable the Add Extra Curves objects. So if I go to Edit, Preferences, jump into Add-ons, search for Extra, you can see here Add Curve, Extra Objects. And what this really means is, if I go to Add Curve, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of new curves. I can go to Curve Profile and I'll select Helix. I'll bring up the dialog box and on the end angle I'll times this by 4 so that should be 1440 yep correct so we now have this nice helix curve very fast really easy to do I'll come to the geometry properties on the right hand side I'll drop down the geometry tab and what I'll do is I'll put the bevel depth to something like 0 0.06 and we end up with this nice curve it's beautiful it's beautiful now the new profile tool is fantastic. Now I'm on the daily build so this is pretty recent to be honest. And another new feature is we can now search in the properties. So if I search for something like bevel, it'll bring everything that has the word bevel. Fantastic, great little addition. So I'll come back down to the bevel, I'll enable profile. And if you've never used bevel profiles, they're excellent for manipulating geometry so we can create some really nice effects, stuff like this. And so what I'll do here is, I'll go to presets and I'll select support loops. Now sometimes you might need to apply this, it just depends. I'll then come up to the fill mode and I'll change this to front. And we end up with this kind of slide effect. Now the resolution is pretty low so I can actually put this up to something like 6. But you might notice that the preset now has an apply preset button. So I'll hit this. That kind of smooths everything off. And what I'll do is I'll actually come up to the modifier tab. I'll add in a modifier and we'll just add in a subdivision surface and that'll pretty much smooth everything off for us so let's just put these up to 3 the next thing I'll do is I'll add in a solidify modifier and that'll essentially just thicken up the mesh now the default solidify modifier that's quite hard to say <laughs> pretty much does the job, I don't really need to tweak it but what I'll do is I'll quickly jump back into the object data properties and mark it this kind of extrusion effect going on and we can replicate this in Blender very easily and all we need to do is actually come to the start and end date of the bevel. So I'm actually going to put the end down to zero. I'll right click and I'll insert a keyframe. And what I'll do here is I'll actually come to frame 100. I'll move this back up to one. I'll right click, insert keyframe again. And we get this really nice extrusion effect. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to frame 25. And I'm actually going to offset the start. So I'll right click, insert keyframe, the value is at zero. And on frame 125, I'll make this 1. Again, I'll right click, insert keyframe, and this will replicate the on and off effect. Pretty damn cool to be honest. So all I really need to do now is give it a background colour and set up a material. But I'm actually just going to cheat, I'm going to jump into object mode, and I'm just going to rotate the curve 180 degrees. And that means it'll go from top to bottom. Let's move it back up a little bit. I'll zoom out in perspective mode and I'll press Control, Alt and 0 and that'll set up my camera for me. And we have this nice effect. Pretty cool. I'll come to the world properties on the right hand side and I'll set up a background colour. Now I'm going to try and replicate the same colour that Mark was using so I'll use a hex value and I think it's FFD442. Let's jump into the render viewport, let's see what we're getting. Pretty cool. I'll then select the curve. I'll assign a new material. Now, and I believe the colour Mark was using was roughly around this value. I'll drop down the specular a little bit just so it's not as shiny. And there we go, we have this nice kind of taper effect. Now what you can actually do is you can duplicate this object, so I'll press Shift and D. I'll turn that around this way. And you get this kind of nice MoGraph effect. And that's pretty much the tutorial, and this renders really quick and Eve. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me on Gumroad, you know what to do, have a nice weekend.